Hey man, y'all ready for the word? Hey, 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 y'all tell somebody about the teachings on Wednesday. This place should be packed out. Hey man, help us spread the word. I know y'all know somebody that's struggling. Hey man, tell them, come on out. Hey man. Hey man, y'all ready tonight? Hey man, what's what good, great honor. Hey Amen. that I welcome up Pastor Ralph Stenson. Hey Amen. Hallelujah. Hey Amen. He's got something to say. Hey Amen. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all may be seated. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Called to battle, destined to win. Hallelujah. Man, right at the right time, right? Yeah. Amen. This is family night tonight. <laughs> oh, man, it's just, you know, tell your family. <laughs> Get all of them here. Listen, we, we, we look this way and we see uh, Bishop and, and Pastor Allison's, Bishop Hank and Pastor Allison's seat here tonight, but I believe they might be watching. So... Praise God. We just believe they are and have found time. Now, I know that a lot of things are going on, but a lot of things are going on. A lot of things are changing. This thing is really exploding. Y'all believe that? Yes. Hallelujah. There are leaders, and they're so close to me because, listen, 26 years ago, we were blessed to meet them. And look what it turned into from a off chance type circumstantial thing we got to meet them and Pastor Hank did a, a testimony and, and I heard it the Lord says that's the man you've been looking for 26 years I mean every time it builds my faith Amen. my God is that good hallelujah got my lovely wife here you know 48 <laughs> 48 years, baby. <laughs> Put two dating, I mean, good time datings, all right? So I put, if I could say 50, and not tell you the whole story, right? 50, and not tell you we were been married for 48. We're working for that 50, aren't we, honey? Amen. It's been a great time. You know, you can, I better not tell the whole story because that story will make you, <laughs> make you want to get married. <laughs> but God will work with you when you don't know too much. And, uh, you know, like tonight we'll find out, you know, probably some blockades to, to us uh, being a, just as everything happening just perfectly in our life, that there's some things there. And if we identify them, family, uh, we can point those things out to ourselves and identify a few things. One of which is the way we, the way we, uh, way we think. You know, when we came to the Lord, or at least me, I didn't know anything. And but it didn't take long. I mean, He started working with me, and because He had me on the trail, so what I knew and what I learned, He. Uh, he was using that, but my mind worked against me so much. I, you know, uh, I've identified, if I look back over all my, all, all my uh, about 40 years uh, being born again, um, I saw what was, what was getting me is my mind. And I read books like from Joyce Meyer's Battlefield of the Mind. I, everybody's read that, right? Listen, I, that's ground one. There's lots of scriptures, and we won't go all there tonight, but listen, and, and then I found out I did have an enemy. You know, I was ignorant before I came to the Lord. Ignorant. I mean, uh, the best uh, story that would describe me, I've shared this a few times, it's kind of funny, but it was, uh, it's the, uh, the story of the scorpion and the frog. You know? And the, the scorpion wanted to get to the other side of the river, right? So he asked the frog, would you take me on your back? And the frog says, no, you'll bite me. And he says, no, I won't. I won't bite you. And so he gets on, he swims him across, 
And just about as he gets to the other side, the scorpion stings him. And he says, why did you sting me? He says, he says, frog, that's what I do. I'm a liar. So I found out the devil is a liar. Amen. The scripture says he's the father of all lies. Amen. So I got that to deal with. I got my own thinking to deal with. And we got a chapter to cover. So with that, that's pretty much what it's about. Because, listen, there's a lot of things come into your thought life that can keep you from being who he wants you to be, who you want to be. First off, gosh, let's start. Let's be real. Who do I want to be? You know, I've heard of these promises. Can it happen to me? I mean, I read about these things. Can it be me? Hey, hallelujah. So we got a story here. The shadow of a dog never bit anybody. Man, chapter 5. <laughs> I said, what is that all about? I said, Bishop, you know, Pastor Tony, I mean, I don't know if y'all talk about these things ahead of time, but I believe these things are in the works, you know, and, and here we are, got a, a book uh, called The Battle Destined to Win. In this chapter, the shadow of a dog never bit anybody. And it's kind of like we just said. There's thoughts that come to you, thoughts in your life. It's pretty simple. Uh, I mean, I've had, it's, even when you know it, you got to deal with it. Y'all got me? Because now you got to activate some things. Let me, I've got a few notes here and I'll read off a couple here. But before I, before I do that, I'm going to, uh, Palm Sunday was not that far ago. And then the crucifixion, then the resurrection. And for you know, you can kind of do this. Pat yourself on the back. Do one of these. I mean, it says, I'm here. Amen. You know, God found me <laughs> somewhere, wherever I was. He found me. If y'all got that, that he found you. Yes. You know, when he spoke about the lost donkey, he sent his disciples out with an instruction to go find this donkey tied up and such and such and such and such, such. And they did, that donkey had been waiting for him in a sense, you know. And when they went and got him, they talked to the owner and the owner turned him loose. And he says, you know, remember when the Gadarene was was bound and, and, uh, and, and, so on he he could even come you know when he was he was uh, he was outcast when Jesus came on the scene when his words came on the scene just his presence everything broke off you know the guy was so I mean he is the description of Satan the demoniac it was his man and he broke right through that whole stuff <laughs> and set him loose Set him loose so well just to show the devil yes. he left him there <laughs> to be a witness Amen. of Jesus set me free. Just his self. You know, there's a, uh, there's a, a Catholic uh, uh, priest named uh, Sir Francis of Assisi. I was telling uh, somebody the other day, I don't know where I said this, but... Right across the street, or right across the river from where I live, is a Catholic uh, diocese of some sort. It's like a retreat, and the name of it is Sir Francis of Assisi. Well, I've known this little story, this little phrase that he spoke for thirty years, and I never knew that place <laughs> was was. I mean, I, my curiosity didn't. So I said, I wonder what that place is over there. You know, it's pretty good distance. I said, and I see these Catholic nuns walk. So I was not all that interested. I didn't think. I pulled it up, and it says Sir Francis of Assisi's, like a learning center, and they have classes there, like uh, Christian retreat, but for Catholics. It's amazing. 
And he said this. This is back to the Gadarene. He says, he says uh, preach the gospel, and if necessary, say something. I love that. That's what the Gadarene did. Jesus can say something through your life. Amen? Hallelujah. Um, I was uh, preparing myself and I heard, heard the Lord say, this I wrote it down, but it's it's, based, it's a scripture. But I heard it pretty much that uh, there is no variableness or shadow of turning in the light, the Father's light. In His light, there's no variableness or shadow of turning. That fits in as we go on into this. Um, that if there's any turns in the road in your thinking. It's most likely not God trying to teach you something in what you're doing. You know, he gives you the light, and the light has the ability, if you'll stick with it and not let other things and other thoughts come in, they will vanish, and you get your promise. Now, that's where we are, and we'll see how that <clears throat> Satan wants to interrupt or so hinder our minds that ultimately our actions in any way that the light from the word of God in order to cast a shadow of fear one way or another before its light can be walked out in a given situation. It's in the book. Before it can be walked out, he's in the business because that's what he does. He's a liar, and the only way he can come against the things of God is to contradict or lie. He knows our, he knows our uh, M.O. He knows our pattern. We know what the Lord God says about him, but he knows us. And so he knows the patterns you've set, you've set. You know, like the patterns, say, like of addictions. Addictions can be, but once you broke out of that place of addiction, just like the gathering came to his right mind, Jesus did some things. He cast out the devil and so on. He, there was deliverance involved. And, but once he had them, he had them. And we got you. Program. And those family that's here tonight, you're here, you've been gotten. Listen, you're going to find out who you are in Christ and how to battle for that position. Take a while. Uh, you know, you, it, this is new to you. Your mind didn't know anything. Your mind uh, makes out like it knows everything. And it'll tell you, this is, you know, again, very simple. It's trying to speak to you, say, you had not got that. You'll never get that. And then he'll probably give you some examples. He might give you an example of somebody that you know here or somebody's left from here uh, or somebody at home, family, something, to give you examples that you, um, that'll stay in your mind. That's your pattern. But you're here 18 months, and the rest of us are here for the get-go. We're, from, we're from here for the duration, right? God didn't bring you, the rest of us in for a program. He brought us in, he brought us in for, for, you know, for your whole teaching thing. Remember what we said about the story about the donkey. When they got the donkey, he loosed them and then brought, they brought the donkey back and then they or they led him back, and where did they lead him? To the presence of Jesus. And y'all are here tonight, and you're here every time, especially the Wednesday night crowd, the Friday night crowd, and the Sunday morning crowd. I, I, like, I love them all, but this takes a, a lot of extra effort. I know because I do it. Plenty of times I say, no, I don't want to go. But uh, 
Diane says, you know, but this is what we do. <laughs> yeah. So when that, so when the donkey comes, to, we when we come, we're you know stubborn. I, if I was teaching just the classes, I might use a different word for the donkey, because <laughs> that's the way we act, right? <laughs> right, Tom. <laughs> Tom says, I said, don't report that back. <laughs> but because we're being led, listen, we can get this thing. Keep it simple. We can, we can fight it. It's going to take a fight. Uh, but it also takes knowledge. And because you're being led, if you weren't in a situation like this, if you weren't coming, you wouldn't hear what we say here. And... One of the scriptures says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So it has to fit in there somewhere. Amen? Okay. And so I bring that back because that was the lead up to uh, the crucifixion. You can learn some stuff. Who, there's a lot of things to learn there, but the resurrection. And now we live on this side of the resurrection. We are not an old wretched man that we used to be. Amen. Right? Amen. You know. But we can live a wretched life. Yes. He doesn't look at us as wretched, but we can look like we can look wretched. You know, Romans 7 says in that wretchedness, he says, who shall set me free is the question that Paul asked. And it wasn't just for him. He was saying it. He was writing it. He was making it. He wanted this to go out forever. Who shall set me free from this body of sin? I believe it might even say death in some translations. And so what it does is, is takes that there was no other way prior to, to Christ in his resurrection, death, burial, and resurrection. So now we're free. And then thanks be to God through Jesus Christ. And we have to realize that that's the key in our life to be able to... Uh, to, to progress in the things of God. I'll say it about right here is, or we, some of us find out how good it is and then we start thinking about, mm, that's too hard. Some of the things he's about ready to talk about or the things I've already discovered seems to be too hard. So I want to go back to Egypt, but I want to go back to Egypt with Jesus. I want to take him back to Egypt with me. Come on, that's good. I want the t I got the ticket. Somebody told me that ticket's good. Lifetime ticket. Eternal, eternal ticket. So I'm drifting away. I don't know if I want to do what that means. And so what happens, you sometimes drift right out of the presence of God to where you drift out there in the field and you're not led anymore. Listen, if we don't stay in position of being led and fed, God puts you in places where you're being fed. Amen? And all of us have got this little thing ticking in our minds that we're going to, maybe late in the night, one night, <laughs> won't you just get out of here? He might not say it just like that, but he knows how to. He might. He knows how to get a place in your thinking. Listen, because there is a place in your thinking that kind of agrees with that. It's been born again. You got born again. You're one third saved, pretty much. Uh, who is it that says that? Uh, uh, Womack on the on the videos one way back. He says you're one third saved. Saved. Give yourself a hand. <laughs> but the other two thirds, that's what you're dealing with. And that's what we're that's what the Bible's all about. That's what Christianity but He wants you to do this thing, free choice. Say free choice. Free choice. <clears throat> it was his idea. Not mine. I would have said, Lord, if you had me in on the council. I just said, don't give them so much free choice. I mean, 
make it heavy if they make the wrong choice. But listen, he has a mercy seat in this. He sprinkled that blood on the mercy seat. It's in my notes. Uh, and if we, <coughs> we, <laughs> mercy seat covers us. When he looks at us, he doesn't see what we used to be. He sees Jesus. Amen. Okay? And that's almost too good to be true. Listen, there's religions in the world. The Hindu religion is one of them. They won't even, I know a, a, a missionary that goes, goes there. He's uh, been going for 20 years. And I said, You're, what do you do? What can you say? He said, I can't hardly say nothing. He said, that Sir Francis of Assisi thing works over there. He says, you can't speak hardly anything because they will take you to jail. The Hindus will. Over in India and all. I mean, you, you all, everybody says, oh, that's a great place to go. That religion will put you under the jail if you talk about Jesus. Now watch this. Because here's what they say. It's too good to be true. And you would make all of our people leave us and we will have no more control over them. That's basically the story that I get from the missionary. Isn't that something? Wow. We got a story. We got a Savior that's too good to be true. And, we, and we're trying to work out a better plan for ourselves. We're trying to work in something that I can have the best of both worlds. Mm. Not good. No good. Say no good. No Get out of here, devil. <laughs> Get out of here, me. Listen, free choice to make choices. All right. taking some notes. Uh, John 8, 44, the devil is, a, is the father of lies. You can look that up later. Uh, <clears throat> one, of this, one of the translations, he was a murderer from the beginning and, and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him at all. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of lies. Actually, didn't say the father of life. He was the father of it. So he's the father of all his resources. He's got not only lies, but other tentacles out there too, right? Satan has only one weapon, and that's fear. <clears throat> Leaving, which fear, he didn't always come at you just straight fear, but he'll lead you to shadows getting into the chapter. Those leading into the, 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 the shadows, there's deception. He's got to deceive you somehow. He's got to deceive you. This thing's too good to be true. If he can get you there, he can get you out of here week one, maybe. Okay? But listen, we're not seeing that. We got pretty good, uh, I, I don't see... Uh, Lewis, but, but Vernon, it's not happening that way. This young man, what's your name again, son? Huh? Lewis. Oh, <laughs> Mother Lewis. Did you think you'd be here this long? Did you say no, sir? No, sir. Yeah. Did you have some other thoughts and plans? No, sir. Did you have some thinking that was... Maybe to lead you out of here. Yes, sir. Yeah. Anybody else want to say on the front row here? Y'all pretty new, right? How about you? Last Sunday? Top of the day. <laughs> Top of the week. <laughs> Still here. How about you? When you first came? How about you? Absolutely. <laughs> Even though you had to be here. Yes, sir. Listen, we had a person here one time that had to be listen, was was able not to go to jail for 15 years. And he left. 
he had his his uh, sentence uh, expunged or something. They get because they think so much of this place. Yeah. There's people wear ankle bracelets and stuff, have and and, uh, and ready to quit and say I'm ready to go to jail where nobody can tell me what to do. No, think about it. <laughs> These guys. We'll, we'll say something. They can tell me to do this and that and then this and that. And then, then they'll, the reasoning, the thinking in the head, and this is the shadows. Says, I want to go where I total freedom. I don't care if they do turn me in. I don't care if they pick me up. <laughs> Jail ain't so bad. <laughs> now, where, that's Egypt thinking. Yeah. Listen, y'all think better than that, right? Yeah. Okay. Obviously, you're still here. You know, Jerry Savelle, when he wrote the book and wrote that, but Kenneth Copeland told him that. You know, he says, listen, I don't have any problem with healing. I don't have any problem with some, a lot of things you say, uh, Kenneth. But he says, I have, I'm having a hard time believing him for financial things, freedom. Copeland tell, tells him, among some other things, he talked with him, but he says, he left him with this on the, that, that day when he had that kind of conversation. He says, uh, let's see, what is it? The shadow of a dog never bit anybody. He said, and that left him with a deep thought, right? He's trying to figure out what does that mean? And so he devoted a chapter to it, and uh, I think it was good for me because I have a problem with shadows things being spoken because listen the enemy and me I can talk a big game but there's sometimes there's a few things out there I'm not sure if I really want to do it I'd like to see you do it <laughs> I give you good ideas <laughs> but I don't necessarily want to do it the enemy knows those kind of things he knows how to speak to you He's spoken to me, uh, the Lord has. He says, Ralph, I want you to be a giver of opportunity. Make opportunities for people. And going about trying to do that is not the easiest thing because I have to deal with me. What about me, Lord? Uh, I want you to be a giver of opportunity. And so the little, voices, the little voice says, uh, means you don't have the ability to do anything but be an opportunity giver. A little voice like that, get in there. What are you doing stuff like that? <laughs> you do. <laughs> Shoot it and all that. But you will get something, opposition and something. Uh, it will be like maybe you'll never get off of this addiction. Because you're basically confined. I can do okay when I'm confined. So, so you're leaving a little slot out there for when you're not confined, you know you might not make it. Prisoners do that all the time, people in jail. They'd rather, some people rather be in jail because at least they're not destroying things, uh, lying, cheating, stealing, hurting their families and all that. At least they're locked up. And somebody's taking care of them. They're out of the equation. They say, listen, baby, I can't help you because I'm in jail. You know, there's some solace in that. Don't let that be. Because that's the type of lies I'm talking about. You know, sickness, financial situations. The enemy wants to get you thinking foremost. How could that ever happen? Listen, when the light shines where there's no variableness of shadow of turning. There's no shadow there. There's no, it's clear. Then that, that becomes uh, uh, your light. And when you meditate and focus on that, you hear others teach it, you read books on it, you find in the scriptures things that, Teachers teach it. Somehow it gets to you, and you know that's a lie. 
but you keep it as a, you keep it in the back of your mind and your thoughts. <clears throat> Time comes to operate in a in a positive thought. Here comes that thing. Let's say let's say finances. Pretty neutral to everybody. Or we could be saying healing, but finances. What can we do and and. That stays in line with what uh, what uh, Jerry Savelle says. And we'll have any problem with healing. I bet you he hadn't been up against much of it yet. Because I mean, we all got opportunity there, right? I don't have any problem that God heals. Well, somebody that's seasoned those, that might not be the top of your list right now because you feel good. <laughs> you know. But if it was the other way around, I mean, if you didn't feeling good, it'd be on top of your list. Your finances would be down here. But right now, finances, right? Well, that's kind of where he was. And <laughs> so he takes a, a simple story about him walking his, his way out. He, he sees and uh, he looks up, I guess, in the concordance and he finds shadow. <laughs> and so he learns what shadow means. It's like a it's like a cloud. It's a variance that keeps you from thinking clearly. He finds himself over in looking up um, um, uh, Psalms 23. Verse 4. Let me see if I can find it on here. Anybody, anybody found it? <laughs> I thought I could find it in my notes quicker, but I was finding my Bible a lot quicker. Yeah, no, uh, Psalms 23. Verse 4. What, did, what does it say? Yeah. He noticed, he noticed it said the shadow of death. And that got inserted in there, so he started meditating on that, and he said, what do you mean shadow of death? So he looks it up, and he finds out that, that he didn't say the, the valley of death, I will fear no evil. It was the shadow of death. It was other things come along in that, other thought processes that cause you that gets you derailed on, on things. So anyway, he got into how he could, uh, he says, oh, I believe this is it. More and more he meditated on it. He found that, that God had a message in that. I found years ago that the Lord gave my primary message of the way I see people through, uh, through a cloud. A shadow is like a cloud. And I had a, a, a vision, I mean, I pray everybody would have one, but I had one like uh, clear sky, moonlight over here, small cloud. Hey, by the way, it was a white cloud, so it wasn't, it wasn't a dark cloud. It was a white cloud. Well, you know why it was white? Because the moon was shining on it, <laughs> I found. Because when it, it would, it would, and this is what caught my eye. I saw it over there. Of course, the Lord is speaking to me. He says, teach you about shadows, a cloud. That thing went and got in front of the cloud, in front, in front of the moon. Now, the moon was still shining. I could tell, and light was shining all around it. But in my life, in that thing, I could see, it was in my front yard, I could see a shadow just around me and outside of that it was light and I said that thing came there super I don't know I mean I'm this is 30 years ago 2030 I think oh at least 30 before I met Bishop <laughs> this was this describes this this thing I look over here I got my Bible I'm out in the yard at night and I'm trying to get 
and that shadow moved. So it was going with me. And so I say, Lord, what is this? I mean, I was not, I didn't have, and he says, see me as I see you. And I says, okay, how do I do that? And still there, shadow. And I heard in me, probably, you know what I believe it was? Was teaching about the blood of Jesus. I set my Bible on the lounge chair. And I'm standing there by, I couldn't read it anyway because it was, the moonlight was bright, but it wasn't that bright. <laughs> I said, see me as I see you. And I said, I looked at the Bible, and the only thing, this, I said, it's got to be me through the blood of Jesus. It must have been the right answer because the thing went, <laughs> went right back over there. The blood of Jesus. So he was teaching me the principles of God, but the elementary principles that I didn't know. If I hadn't, uh, you know, we, when we got born again, we were in church all the time, and we, we, I was actually seeking. I went to a class my, my Sunday school class was named, uh, the teacher taught it was, he called it the seekers class. And you went in that class, if you, that was a special class. You had, you, you sought God in that class. You were hungry and thirsty. It was not just like Bible knowledge class. This one was hungry and thirsty. So anyway, that's what, that's the attitude I had. And then this went on for uh, nine or ten times that cloud would come. But the other times, how it would come is when I had thoughts. I said, how can this be happening to me? The cloud. Blood of Jesus. Ah. I think, what does this have to do with where I am and why I came out here in the yard to seek you, Lord? Three kids in the house, small house, <laughs> dying in there. I came outside just to get, just to, you know, it was so beautiful out. And, I was like, and anyway, that went on different different thoughts and things. And did, he says, see yourself as I see you. He says, now see me as I see you. So it would be, okay. Getting things straight. This is the kind of, I think, in depth that when you read the book with uh, Jerry Savelle, this is what was happening with him. He was getting an understanding of what, what the shadow was that kept him from, uh, you know, you know, you can look at death and not be scared of it. So the shadow makes things you scared. So that happened to me, and I, when I got this chapter, I'm saying, man, because seeing yourself as God sees you through the blood of Jesus it has to do with that mercy seat. Listen, if you push back the lid on the mercy seat, it's a lid on top of the, the ark, right? If you push that back and you, you look at things through the law, uh, through the rod, right? The, the Moses' or Aaron's rod, the budded rod. Now, what was the other piece in there? The manna. If you if you get in if you get into that too deep, you're you're liable to push back the lid, and then you incorporate what's in there that he has put the mercy seat over into your life, and it becomes thoughts. So now you got you got religious thoughts, you got Satan's thoughts, and you got your own thoughts about things, and all of them designed basically to slow you down or get you off. Subject, you know, uh, definitely with Satan. It's trying to keep you off of it. Um, okay. And when you work through the book, here, let me just get to this place. You might, like he... he him writing this is you might have been told that there's not enough money. Uh, is that a shadow? All right. 
You may have been told you never be, you'll never be healed of that disease. Shadow. Now, could it be you and Satan? Remember, he's got you patterned. And he doesn't want you to be led. He don't want you to know stuff. Amen? Yeah, man, I don't want to amen that. But that's what he, that's his MO. That's his method of operation. He don't want you to know stuff. So what's he going to do? Keep you out of places like this. <clears throat> like when Pastor Tony says, you know, you need to tell people, bring them into the family here. Uh, amen. That's a shadow. Uh, okay. You may have been told your kids will never get off drugs. You know, I'm talking to a friend of mine, and um, uh, Lewis is talking to the same person and helping me with him. But his son did a, a you know, in high school, they, up in y'all's neck of the woods, Gainesville, uh, uh, Ocala area. You know, hung out at Steak and Shake in the bowling alley, right? A bunch of people, and they, 18 years old, you know, get where you defy authority. I can think of it because my I've had my sons do the same thing. I mean, I've had to be I had to watch them. I had to watch one of my sons walk the, you know, do the, go through the thing. They called me early. I got there. The sheriff wanted me there to see the situation, so I got there. Then I had to watch that. with other kids you know and then say what's you know just before graduation this man calls desperate just before graduation three weeks away from his son and he's got four shares and he's having to walk the line so back in the days of my kids it was more alcohol and stuff but here it was cocaine <laughs> pipes <laughs> Booze. What else do they have? Paraphernalia and stuff, you know. And and they know what this. What if they arrest them? They're going. It's going to be a. You know, most cases in that situation would have been a felony, right? And so that's what they're dealing with. And, and Lewis has helped me out, helping him walk walk them through. Can we keep him tied up for three weeks? <laughs> Can we crush that cell phone <laughs> that you spoke of? You know, because there's other people involved. They'll be trying to get to you and say, hey, let's, you know. And that's what we had the body of Christ for, to help people. You guys got, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you have uh, teachers that's come up from, for the most part, come up right through this thing. And when they teach, y'all know it. Pastor Jose, y'all, y'all love him. Yeah. Oh my God. Sunday mornings for the students is uh, fabulous. And uh, he's been there. They ad everybody identifies. They can. I believe one factor of people staying here is that class. It's that important because he, it, you're, you're exposing somebody that's 17 so years, close to 17 years of being set free and walking into this thing and God's given them special abilities and, and uh, hopefully we know how to turn off these sounds and these things that's coming at us and trying to keep us from, from leaving. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. The Lord loves you guys. Amen. All right. Last, let me finish the paragraph and then we'll, we'll close up. The next time Satan tries to discourage you with a lack of finances, sickness, or family problems, uh, addictions, and so on, let him know from the start that his threats are nothing but a shadow. Remember this thing about shadow. It can be a cloud, whatever, you know, but, but uh, it's designed to keep you bound in a confined area of way of thinking. And that combined area of way of thinking by all the little, your own agreements and of, yeah, I'll never be anything. I mean, I've been this way all my life, you know. How am I ever going to get out of it? That's a shadow, right? 
It's a cloud that hangs over you. It seems to follow you around. You might want to get into the light, but you but because you're not equipped, you don't know the, the code words. You don't have the key. Listen, it's very simple when you believe. And so the part of the, the believing part that this key opens heaven for me. That which is in heaven can be done here on earth. And you start believing that as you're taught in it and you make trips to the altar, you know, consistently. Every time the Lord tugs on a little spot in you, touches your life in something, a message, or somebody says, be quick to go. Well, listen, you guys do great at that. Every time I turn around, I mean, they just reprinted Friday night, and here they were. <laughs> I mean, Friday night, there was a line of people, double line. Sunday morning, a double line. Man, can you believe it? Wednesday night, the, and what we were after, because somehow God's touched us, and the, the process that he's got this, this lighthouse on is it works. Man, we look around, we see how people grow, and all the ones that's outside of here that's that's not here now, but they've been touched, and they know they've been touched. Y'all know you've been touched, Amen. okay? And there's a way. So you go to the altar, you get you you get the change, and then you hold on to the change, because that's when you're going to get attacked again. You're going to get things going to come at you again. Well, my my healing took place last night, but today, uh, you know, what is that? I don't know. That's a shadow. Amen. I don't have, we don't have to shout about it because we're not giving that thing any. But we want a no variableness. The light that gets shown and shined into our hearts from the great teaching. Uh, I'm thinking two weeks ago, you used the word. I didn't even find it in the, when I was reading. I said, man, I don't remember seeing in there where it says obey. <laughs> you know, you believe Obeys attached to it, <laughs> you know. So you find out little details. Well, if I'm gonna believe, you know, and obedience is better than sacrifice, yeah. right? And learn about that, and then you start applying it. Well, that takes a little while to sink in the gray matter. <clears throat> I believe uh, that you have, we have, uh, the Spirit living in us. He's not a little spirit. He's the full spirit. He's represented totally in us. And so he's there when we're obedient. And obey. However we get to a place like you are, give yourself a hand now, really. I, say this, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> I was obedient. I was obedient. I am obedient. Say, I am obedient. God's on my side. He's leading, me He's leading me because I'm willing to be led. Yes. You know that donkey, that donkey did, uh, was a non, uh, it wasn't broken. Y'all know that. And he was able to ride that thing. Amen. First timer. Got on that, sat on the side of it. And whether he told the people or they do it out of the, however they did this in the Passover thing, they took their clothes and they take their clothes and they laid it on this donkey. And then he got upon that. There's, all, there's more teachings than that. But, but uh, <clears throat> when you give your all to following Jesus, don't be like them. Next week, they were crucified. It's because what they didn't know. You know. Let's see. But it's a way of thinking. So you get your mind changed, the way you're thinking, and this little story, uh, your imagination can get involved, and there's a lot of things, but you'll learn them all here. They got we got classes for that. But it's like this. I looked this up on the internet. Does that make it true? <laughs> but I heard somebody say it. A preacher used it, so he said it was it was a true story. This lady 
uh, she was visiting her, her folks or something, and she, uh, they, they were older, and they gave this the, the younger, maybe, maybe it was a daughter, I believe. Her name was Linda, not, not you, Linda. <laughs> All right, it's not you. Yeah, I have a, a last name on this internet story. But it wasn't you, Linda. But it, the person's name was Linda. And she had been going to, you know, the general store and uh, what do they call it, dollar store, dollar general? Went to those places, but she'd gone to the grocery store and she bought some groceries for the, for the family. She's going to cook them a big dinner. And she's, she's, uh, <laughs> she gets in her, she's making all of her stops. She gets in her car and she's sitting there and pow. And she immediately grabbed her hip and she says, my brains are coming out. I'm dying. And she's sitting there. She don't know why she's dead, but she's dying. She's sitting there. She won't even, she, it's, the car's hot. She hadn't turned the car on yet. And the person sees her like that, and so comes up to the car, and the windows are locked, doors locked. And says, "What's wrong with you, man? What's wrong with you? Anything I can help you with?" And she says, my, "I'm holding my brains; they're falling out." They call nine one one. Nine one one comes, breaks the window, the back window, pries her hands off of her head. I said, man, what's, what's wrong? She said, I've been shot. Somebody shot me. My brains are falling out. And the, the EMS person says, man, it looks like Pillsbury dough. <laughs> the thing exploded, the can. <laughs> and it blew up in her hair. And she thought it was her brains. I leave you with that. Your imagination can get carried away. If y'all got any, listen to this. As we close tonight, y'all have any fears? It might not be real. <laughs> I can feel my brains. In. I fell off of a high, you know those high bars where you do the can you imagine me doing anything that's on the high bars? I'm doing, I'm thinking, I could go do, was it the backward ones? No, monkey bars, right? Could do the front, no, I could do the back one. It took me a long time. The, the, there was, but then I says, oh, I can do the front one. I went, whoop, and I went, I made a half a turn, and I landed on top of my head. And so when I heard that story and read that story, I, I had a bump on back of my head. I had a crew, I wore my hair kind of like Lewis, crew cut. I had a bump that big, and I thought my brains was coming out. I could feel around the edges of it. I had crushed my brain. I'm looking, I mean, I'm down on the ground, and I landed on a root, you know, those big old oak tree roots. <laughs> I landed on that sucker, and... That thing did that. Hey, you know what was bad about it? I had to go to school with that big old knot up there <laughs> with a flat top. You can imagine how ugly that was. But I went to the doctor thinking I lost, I said, my brains are coming out. I can feel the edge of my skull. And the guy, the doctor laughed. He says, son, that's just the swelling and it's an illusion by your hand feeling like you're feeling in there. He says, that ain't happening. He said, let me stick a needle in it. You know, that was the end of it. I mean, you know, but my imagination went so far. Amen. Oh, excuse me. God bless you guys. I'm going to turn it over to you. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Good word. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Ralph. The shadow of a dog never bit anyone. Amen. Fear not. Amen. Have faith in God. Thank you, Pastor Ralph.
Amen. Before we close tonight, if you need prayer tonight, amen, if you need prayer tonight, we want to pray for you. Prayer team, could you come on up? Amen. If you need prayer tonight, don't leave without prayer. Amen. If you're here tonight, you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. We want to give you the opportunity tonight to receive him as your Lord and Savior. So if you need prayer tonight, come on up. Amen.
been blessed tonight? Amen. Glory to God. Tomorrow, National Day of Prayer. Amen. They also have something um, in the afternoon, Brother Lewis, at, at uh, what, Gaslight Park? 11 a.m. Downtown Tampa. Amen. They're going to be praying down there also at 11 a.m. It's an all-day event. Amen. And then it concludes in the evening at Steinbrenner feel on Del Mabry. Amen. But uh, come on out, join us. With The team will be out there, the ambassadors for Christ will be at the 11 a.m. thing. And then also they'll be singing at the entrance of the uh, the prayer meeting in the evening. Amen. So come on out. We're going to have a good time in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's lift our hands up to the Lord. Amen. Father, we just, oh, Friday, we won't be having service in here. We'll be having service in the chapel. Amen. Friday night, because they're going to be setting up in here for the uh, tea party. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Ralph. Powerful word. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Like he was, like he was dropping golden nuggets on us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands up to the Lord. Father, we just bless you tonight. We thank you for what our ears heard. Father, seal that word in our hearts, Father God. Bring it back into our members. Father, we thank you. We don't have to be afraid of the shadow of death. 
Father God, because you are our Lord and you are the light that never changes. Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Amen. Be blessed.